On the agenda tonight, we're going to be taking a look at and having a listen to Roy Orbison singing Walk On. Hello, Phil here from Wings of Pegasus and welcome to another analysis video. If you enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. So we've had a lot of requests to take a look at Roy in the pitch monitoring software. And what I love about this is that we get to see why somebody's voice is unique. And Roy certainly had one of those voices that you just knew instantly. And now we'll be able to take a look at his voice as well as having a listen to it. It is a short song, just over two and a half minutes in length, as they all were in the late 60s. So if you want to listen to the song the whole way through without me interrupting it, because I am going to be jumping into this, there's going to be a link in the description below. And that's going to be the full song. We're going to be listening to Roy's isolated vocal here. And there's a piano on the screen which we're going to be relating the notes to so we get an idea of range but let's see what we can see walk on if we should meet walk on on down the street Walk home. I'm just going to jump in here because already we can see that we are <laughs> at C3. So when we take that over to our piano, C3 is here. And you want to try and remember these notes for slightly later on. So we get an idea of the range, but I'll point out on the piano anyway. But you can start watching Roy's range and where he ascends because he, he had a mighty range. And you'll be able to see that in this performance. But just throughout all of his songs, he had that ability, that tonal consistency to totally change where his voice was pitch wise, but not change the sound, the emotion, the expression in his voice, it wasn't like hearing somebody different sing the higher he got, which can be the case sometimes with particular singers. But straight off the bat, we can see that Roy does something that is unique to the, these videos that we've been doing so far with the pitch monitoring software in that he gets straight into vibrato on pitch and just looking at our vocal lines here, you can see that there's never a straight line and then vibrato, which you would tend to see with most singers and other singers just hit a note straight and don't use vibrato that much. But Roy is the opposite. He goes straight into vibrato. Let's listen to it from the beginning again to listen to that wobble in the voice. Walk on. If we should meet Walk on And getting straight into that vibrato when he's going Whoa, whoa, the, the note comes out Whoa, but it's always got that Whoa, whoa, whoa So the vibrato's almost already happening when he's on pitch. And we can see that just here, and this is why it's great looking at this, because you get to see that none of these lines are straight. So this one note already had vibrato in it. And that is so unique to be in vibrato when you're hitting a note. Usually you go, whoa, you'd have a whoa, a little bit of a straight line, whoa, and then your vibrato comes in, but he's whoa, straight in there. And when you're not used to doing it, it's a really difficult way to try and sing because certainly when I was learning to sing, I was focused on pitch, trying to hit notes. So vibrato is then a technique that you work at after, <laughs> once you've learned to hit pitches. But this is a great example of someone who has a natural ability for singing, who hasn't learned to sing from scratch. This is just the way that they do it. And then when you can see the vocal lines here, you can then try and copy it now knowing what he's doing. But 
doing it naturally, he's not thinking about this. He's not thinking, okay, when I get to the note, I've got to make sure that I'm already vibratoing in the note. He's just doing it. So again, it's another example of a unique singer and we're seeing something unique with the vocal lines on screen. And we'll keep it going from here because it is a short song, short performance, but Roy's voice is so <laughs> easy to listen to, but great to listen to because of this technique. On down the street, walk on. Don't even look, walk on. And listen to these slides that whoa, he's going up, whoa, up, whoa, and then coming back down again, that glissando that I've mentioned in other videos, that sliding between notes. But then look at the way he's sliding up, coming down, going back up, coming down. And the vibrato, as soon as he's on a note for any length of time, he's just going to be vibratoing instantly. But have a little look back here as we come back. You can see all of this vibrato going on. But let me just take it back forward to where we were. Close up the book. We don't want the world to see us like we are. We should never have even gone this far. Listen to the expression with his vocal, as he descends here, he takes his vibrato down. He's vibratoing whilst almost uh, having that disappointment, that almost regret. And it's all about the lyrical content and conveying that to the listener, which Roy does so well. I'm just going to have a listen to that again. Good night, have even. So it's that never have even and that uh, that disappointment at the end like i said the regret of that line it reminds me so much of while my guitar gently weeps eric clapton's solo that he played in that where he bends the string up vibratos but lets the string come down while still applying that vibrato so that's a lead guitar example of what Roy's doing with his voice here. Exactly the same thing, but using vocal cords and doing it like this, if you're trying to do it, is going to be really difficult to keep it as even as Roy does. But he can do it because it's just natural to him. He's automatically got this vibrato in his voice. Gone this far. And we've pretty much always got the words of the vocal line and the last word is the instant vibrato so you can hear the story if he was doing vibrato all the time even on these short words the short phrases then you wouldn't be able to hear what he's saying so he makes sure that when he just says one or two words gone this far it's actually, actually a lot subtler gone gone there's a little wobble in there gone this far and then the vibrato comes in a little bit more dramatically after quickly brush away so we know that roy's always got this vibrato in his sound but the killer is how consistent his vibrato is not only just applying it the whole time but from a timing perspective the frequency of his vibrato and the gap between each of his waves vibrato wise so we're talking about if i'm singing through this the top notes of the vibrato would be ah and i'd go ah and you put those together you get ah and that is vibrato so that's the wave that we're looking at here i've taken another one of his vocal phrases and i'm going to place that over the top of this vocal phrase and it's just a note that he's holding and look at and this is insane the accuracy and 
just how regular that vibrato is. It means that every note Roy sang, he had the same vibrato. And you know that it's natural because it came in instantly and it was a carbon copy of itself every single time. So when we look at this, I mean, this first part, these are different notes, by the way. I've had to move this to get it over the top of this note that we're seeing here. But... Look at the lines, the way that they match up to the point where we're massively zoomed in here. And we're talking about milliseconds difference between these, just the vibrato in the first place. So the fact that on this other note that he sang, we have the white is the other note, by the way. And you can see that the yellow is just an extension of the other line that he sang. The vibrato, timing wise is pretty much split second. I'm talking about milli to the millisecond, his vibrato, the waves of it, just perfectly replicated each time. A machine, you would normally think, does this because it is so accurate, but this is his natural vibrato. He's just doing this. He just had the ability to lock in this vibrato that is so precise. And I've never, ever so far, in all of these videos that we've done over the last probably a couple of months now, I've never seen a vibrato this consistent to the point where you can zoom in to this kind of level and see that even on different notes, they line up perfectly. So, just massively impressive, but this is why his voice sounded so unique, as well as having that range, which we'll talk about in a second, and having the tone, because those were unique as well. But just this vibrato, just being so rock solid to see it like this like I said it's like a machine just firing off this vibrato but it's not mechanical sounding because he's keeping those smooth waves to it it's got all of that expression in there so let's get back into it by the way this is the part which we were just zoomed into and you might have noticed you might not have noticed we're now at a d4 Looking at where we were a minute ago at the beginning of the song, C3, we've gone over an octave. And you can see how, I'm going to take this back so we can listen to it. There's a quite dramatic jump up over an octave. Let's have a listen. Arms, quickly brush away that teardrop. And this is what's so great about Roy's voice is that tonal consistency means you don't notice the fact that we've now gone up over an octave from where we started because it sounds like the same voice. He doesn't sound like he's straining. A lot of singers will have to really push their voice to go up an octave, but Roy just does it really easily. Let's continue. Walk away, darling, don't stop. Don't look back. So now consistent F4s happening there. When we go back to our piano, like I said, C3 is going to be down here. And the F4 that we just hit was up here. So still quite a range that we're covering. And you can see, I mean, that's pretty much the whole going down to the G2 for the baritone range. But you've got pretty much 95% of the baritone range that he's just covered from bottom to top. And we're starting to get into the male tenor range here. So uh, let's continue. Walk on. Don't turn around. Walk on. And just taking this vibrato I mentioned about covering two, three, sometimes four semitones. And I mean, these lines, by the way, are semitones. <laughs> so when we're looking at this, he's descending with his vibrato. But look at the range that he's covering here. Really wide vibrato. And that just adds to the uniqueness of the sound. Because when we relate this to other singers that we've looked at, for example, Annie Lennox, great example of somebody who sang straight notes and 
pretty much never covered two semitones. It was just all really above the line the whole time and just around the line. But here, look at the difference just with these vocal lines as recording them now. The range that we're covering just with vibrato is unique. To higher ground. And when I mentioned about unique, it's unique to mainstream music and contemporary music. When you talk about classical singers, that's generally where you start to see more of three and four semitones being covered with their vibrato because they have that whole, oh, that all of that drama in the voice they have. That's why it stands out when you have a singer with that ability to control that vibrato so consistently, but singing in the mainstream and singing songs that aren't opera and aren't really even musical theatre. They are potentially those pop songs and popular songs that are listened to a lot, but the singer has the ability of somebody who sings in opera or in musical theatre. Take the love we've shared together Keep it in your heart forever Don't forget me But baby, walk on Just to jump in here, we've now got the G4s being fired off and if we look on our piano here for the ranges the G4 is here and it's just one two notes off the A4 top end now of the male tenor range I said that we've covered all of the baritone range we're now into the male tenor range let's keep on going to the end if you ever A4 And there we had a B4. So it means that we're all the way up here, just one under the C5, the male tenor high C. And you can see here that the male tenor range is ending really at A4. So he's gone above and beyond the male tenor range now. So we've got all of that baritone range and now all of the male tenor range, now getting into counter tenor range, which you won't hear being referred to a lot because the notes above the male tenor range are just called male tenor range up here, but it is sometimes referred to as counter tenor range. Just such a range that we've covered from that C3 now all the way up to one note off the C5. So that's two octaves worth of range within one song. And as you'll know from the other videos, I always say that if a vocalist can cover one octave with their voice, that's great. You'll get such an emotional journey throughout the song because of the change in pitch. But Roy Orbison could take you on double the amount of journey with his voice. And when you add in that vibrato, which by the way is still consistent, it's still exactly the same at the top of his range as it was at the bottom of his range, then you get one hell of a unique voice. Uh, let's just finish off this final note. Whoa! And there we have it. And just look at the distance between our peaks and troughs here. Really consistent. Like I said, even an A4 right at the top there, consistent the whole way through. So, I mean, when you break it down and look at it in this kind of detail, you start to get an appreciation of why it's so unique. The fact that he goes straight into vibrato on held notes. The range that he covered, the vibrato that he had so consistently and when we're talking about the vibrato, you can see it on this last note that he's now a little bit tighter with that vibrato, but it's still firing off at exactly the same rate. So when you start to add that together with his tone, it is such a unique vocal when you add all of these things together, when you zoom into it, when you overlap one line with another line, just how accurate he was. It's just on a totally different level, which doesn't surprise me about Roy Orbison's voice because he's just got one of those standalone voices that when you listen to, you thought, wow, this guy, guy's got such a unique voice. But then when you even analyze it and zoom in on it, you realize how unique it is.
Anyway, thank you guys so much for requesting this video and Roy's voice to have a look at in the pitch monitoring software. As always, keep those suggestions coming in the comments section below and let me know what you guys think. If you did enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and I'll see you guys at the next one. Rock!